example of a user journey map that I was talking about. And this one has to do with, you know, this person, and we just give them a name, just to personify them. We give them an image, we give them a name. They have an age, they have goals, they have personality. Like they, this is a persona. This is a fictitious person, but they have all the attributes of a real person. And this is the kind of person that we want to hope to be the you know the best users of our tool or our software or product or our service or whatever it is that we're designing for. So in this case, you know, this is Sarah, and the scenario is that Sarah is going to the movies, she's excited to go off for the night, and we'll meet her friends at the theater. Now I got this from Lucy Chart, so if you guys have Lucy Chart, this is a great template that you can get as well just from Lucy Chart. And so she has expectations, right? She wants to have a great movie. She wants the friendly staff. She wants good seating. And so Sarah, as she's going on her journey um, to go to the movies, these are some of the high points and the low points in her journey. So one, the first thing she's going to do is decide, right? She's going to decide whether or not she wants to go to the movie or not, or which movie she wants to see. So she looks at the movie on her phone. She decides which movie to see right on her phone and then she buys a ticket online from the phone so at this point you know it probably starts off okay but you know there's high anticipation there's a lot of energy here to to the point where she might be thinking i wonder if i can find a closer theater like she she's excited about buying the, the tickets to see the movie and the thing that probably going through her mind is about where which which is the closest theater to her and then there's a the whole travel so she drives to the movie theater she stands in line and buys popcorn and she finds a seat next to a friend. So this could be a little bit of a low turn in her, in her feeling because she may have to do traffic, you know, then you gotta find a parking space and all that stuff. You know, back before COVID, finding a parking on a, on a night when there's a popular movie is always like, you know, a little bit stressful, right? And then, so as she's parked, then she starts to go back on her emotional level, right? So she says, where's my friend? She's trying to look for her friend. Um, in, during the movie, she's watching the movie, and while she's watching the movie, she's having a high positive experience, right? Now she's relaxed, she's able to just sit back and enjoy, you know, so she, she might be thinking, finally, I can relax, and that's a, the highest point of this whole going to the theater experience, right? And on her return, she exits the theater, and she's driving home, so now she has to go find her car, and then it might be that she gets home late, and she's like, well, I have to go to work tomorrow, so... You know, I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time being out tonight, so she might just end on a little bit of a low turn. But that just shows you the highs and lows, the ebbs and flows of the experience. And as you can see with this, there is no, there's no focus on system here. We're not talking about how the system is reacting to whatever she's doing. We're not talking about what the app does and how the app doesn't do. You just want to understand the user, the person. What is this person feeling? What are they doing? What are they going through? How are they going about their day? And how does their experience, you know, what is the experience that they're having like? So, for example, if I was designing around this, then I would say, okay, at these points, she's low. What can I do to make this even easier for her? You know, what can I do when she's going down in, in the emotional um, side of it to help? And how can I make this easier so she doesn't have to think about these things that she's thinking about? What can I do? How can we, how can we help her as she's trying to get this experience of watching the movie? So things like that is what you want to be doing when you start off designing a new process because you want to understand the world in which your process is going to and, you know, live. This is true for all processes, but especially for new processes because when you onboard a user, I find a very good onboarding process will really go far away for them to be loyal and to continue and to use it. You know, you want to give a great first impression. And if this is a new feature, a new, you know, functionality, um, I mean, a new new service, a new product. And then you have the golden opportunity to give a first impression that is going to be lasting. And so if you understand your users well, and you do all of your stakeholder research, you can put this together, then you really have the opportunity to make use of that information they're going to give you. So you're going to get all this plethora of information. You're going to narrow it down. You're going to try to identify your ideal users. You're going to understand their journey. And using something like this, which is a, which is a user journey map, could be very helpful. There's some other ways you can do user journey map. It doesn't always have to look like this. Um, here's another example. This one I got from, I think it's Miro Board. I did a video on um, online collaboration tools. And that video is here or here. <laughs> Go watch that video to see all the different tools. 
And this is the one from Mirror Board that just came with the tool and it basically gives you this persona, who they are, the reason why they want to use the product or service and the reason why they want to buy it. And basically their interests, their personality, their skills, their dreams, you know, the relationship with the technology. So you really want to map out all the different facets of this person that's going to be your ideal user, right, or your ideal customer. So these are just ways you can, you can document that. Here's another way, which is also very popular here, is a picture. As usual, we put a picture to personify the person. They put their age. She's Janet. She's 38 years old, married, living in Berlin, Germany. I mean, you could get down to a lot of detail, <laughs> a lot of detail, their age, their marital status, their location. It can be that detail. And basically some quotes from her, what's her goals and needs, the motivations, the frustration that she's having, you know, the everyday activities and her, you know, internet savviness basically, and all the other things that you think might be relevant and useful um, to, to what you're trying to build. So these are just some examples I want to share with you on designing personas, and it's gonna go a far way in designing a new process. Remember, getting to the actual process flow is, is not as important as understanding the user. So spend as much time as you need to fully flesh out your users and your customers and understand them very well before you try to you know, solve a problem for them. Understand the problem, understand the user, and the solution will just keep coming.